Hey guys, we've got a sunny, sunny day. It's actually semi-warm for a change. And so I'm gonna get out here. We're in the tropical garden right now, or the edges of the tropical garden, what will be the tropical garden in just a couple of months. And it's time to do some cleanup and some cutting back because we're past our last frost now. There's no temperatures below 42 in the 10-day in the forecast. So there shouldn't be any risk of frost unless something crazy happens. I'm standing here in front of one of the beds we're gonna be cleaning out. There's some sun patients and cannas that definitely need some work. And it's amazing that only uh, three months ago, three and a half months ago, I was sitting in front of this bed doing a video and you guys all comment on how great it looked and it did. But with the cold and the rain and the hail, it has seen much better days. We're gonna tackle these pots as well. Also, these ginger need to be cut back. I'll show you how to do that. These poor alocasias, elephant ears. You can see this one did its job. I left it on, it protected this one from frost, but got some work to do there. Unfortunately, some of my Monstera deliciosas did get damaged by the cold. A lot of them look good. I'm only gonna take off the worst ones so it will only minimally affect the look of this bed and only for a short time. As soon as the weather starts to warm up, it's gonna explode with growth again and it's just gonna be nice and lush. And I know a lot of you looking at snow right now are already thinking that looks pretty lush to me. So I'm gonna start over here in the sun patients and cannas. And you can see that we've got a lot of the old growth, but then there's also new sprouts and weeds coming up. With the sun patience, you can see a lot of damage. However, you can also dig down here and see a lot of new growth coming out and actually some flower buds. So for these sun patients, because we do live in a mild winter climate, they're gonna live through the winter in place. You could also take cuttings of these though in the fall and grow them indoors all winter and then put them back out in the spring. And you don't want to do any of these, this cutting back until all danger of frost is past. Because as insignificant as these upper leaves look, they are protecting the lower leaves and branches from frost. But we are past that now. So I'm going to cut all of these way down just above a node or just above where I see new growth happening. All at about the same level so the plant looks even when I'm done and will grow back evenly. Just like that. I'm actually finding with these sun patients that it's just easier to snap them off rather than to use the clippers. They actually have a really satisfying snap and they snap off at exactly the right place above a node. Okay, that was quick, that was easy. Um, now I'm gonna get started with the cannas. And with the cannas, I'm gonna take down everything that is not a brand new sprout. So even if it's a foot tall, two feet tall, but still looks good, I'm taking it off because that's gonna push more energy into the rhizome to start pushing a bunch of new growth that's actually gonna be sturdy and flower. A lot of the winter growth that comes up, it's just very wimpy and floppy and we don't want that. Now, if you don't live in a mild winter climate where you can keep cannas out all winter long, they are super, super easy to just lift up, use a fork or even a, a shovel or spade, get them up out of the ground, dry them off for a couple of days so they're nice and dry, shake the soil off of them and just put them in bags, put them in a frost-free basement or garage and they're gonna be totally fine. You can bring them out and they wake up very quickly, almost immediately, as soon as they get into the warmth, into the moist, they'll start pushing new growth. So we're gonna follow these long stems here and cut them right off at ground level, or just above.
Now this growth here that looks new, I'm actually gonna chop it back because it grew in cold weather. So it's gonna be more floppy. It's not gonna, especially on the tall varieties where these aren't super tall, so it's questionable. These here that are about a foot tall or less, I'm gonna leave those. This is just gonna push more energy into the rhizomes to start busting through a whole bunch of new growth. And that's what we have left. just as easy as that there's a lot of new little spikes coming up so now typically there's a couple more things I would do before calling this job finished number one I would give all of this a liquid feed with probably Neptune's harvest uh, seaweed or the tomato and veg I'm not gonna do that today because the ground is already so saturated I don't want to add more liquid to that more moisture um, so I'm going to skip a few days, let it dry out a little bit, and then I'll do that. Another thing I'm waiting to do because of the moisture levels in the soil is to turn on the drip system and just make sure that it's not clogged, there's no cuts in it, everything is still working well after the winter being shut off. And then once I make sure that's good, then putting a fresh load of mulch over this. So that's all got to wait until we dry out a little bit. So now we're going to move over here to the ginger bed. The first really quick job I can do is to cut off these colocasia leaves. However, and this goes for any time pruning, not just at the beginning of the year, you have to cut in the right place to not mess up the next generation of leaf that will come out. So let me show you how to do that. Colocasias come out of each other's stem. So if you can see, there's a groove here that is where this once was. It grew up out of that groove and made a new leaf. And if you look really closely on this one, you can see the next leaf developing underneath the skin of this one. So if you cut down here, you're gonna mess up that leaf that's developing inside. So that only is on the newest stem. This stem has already had one come out of it. So we can cut it way down there you can see that this stem has come out of this stem, so we can get rid of this one. Now this one here, you can see there's still a stem inside. There hasn't been anything broken open. So we're gonna leave that one for a second. Up here, you can get a view of the new leaf emerging out of this one's stem. So if we wanna cut this off, for right now at least, we can cut it off right there above where it comes out. We can cut further down on this once this breaks away and becomes its own stem. In some cases you can help it do that, but this isn't quite ready yet. This leaf is good enough, so we're gonna leave it. As far as these two, you can just look closely and see where this leaf stops, right there, the leaf underneath there, and just cut right above it. Same with this, follow that little line up there can feel the bump too. Stop where that bump is and you can cut. Now those leaves will be able to come out successfully and at that point you can trim these off. Now these are white ginger and gingers are kind of the same as cannas. If they were in the ground all winter, if you live in an area where you can do that, and they have any winter growth coming up from the ground that's over a foot tall, that gets cut off. You're looking for uh, the really good strong sprouts coming out of the ground, they should be as thick as your thumb or thicker. And those are gonna be the ones that produce the thick stems that toward the end of the summer will bloom. Now, if you cannot grow ginger outdoors in your climate, it is another one that is pretty easy to overwinter in a frost-free garage or basement. Um, ginger does like staying in place. Cannas, you can lift them and, and store them in a bag pretty easily. Gingers, you can do that, but you may never get any blooms off of them, which the leaf structure during the summer, especially the variegated ones, you don't even need the, the blooms. But one trick to kind of make them feel like they're staying in place is get a large pot, plant them in that pot, and then you can put that pot 
in the yard, on the patio. You can sink it down in the ground for the summer and then easily lift it and put it back indoors for the winter. Pruning is gonna be the same way no matter if you grew them inside or outside during the winter. So to get started, any of these long ones that you can see the dead blooms on or that look ratty, just take them off right at ground level. Now with gingers, here's where you can make a judgment call. This is some new winter growth. Look how floppy it is. So that's obviously gonna be removed. However, we've got this one here that when you look down at the bottom, you can see it's got a big, strong base on it where it came out of the ground. These two also. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave those. And you can see looking closer, you see these big sp uh, spikes getting ready to come up? These are nice, big, hefty, strong looking spikes. Look at that. So we're gonna leave those. This, we're not leaving. This will do nothing. It's this Dracaena, and uh, it's pretty easy, and you can see it has a lot of damage from the cold, the hail, just winter in general. Um, all we're gonna do is come down, starting at the bottom, and just peel the leaves down exposing more of the trunk. And I'm just gonna leave these little rigs at the end. And you just wanna be careful. You can, you can see here as we get closer to the top, it starts to get narrower, and so you can break that off pretty easily if you're not careful. However, even if it does break off, it's not a big deal because it'll just break into two. It'll start growing two new branches, just like when you pinch off anything. Looks like it might be developing a little rust. Just doesn't like cold damp weather, which is what we've had. Now these Dracaena can be brought in and used as houseplants. In fact, you'll probably find these at Home Depot in the houseplant section. So bring them in during the winter, enjoy them inside, and then feel free to put them back out once all danger of frost is passed. Now this here is called uh, a ponytail palm or a, po or a bottle palm or an elephant's foot tree, which you can see why they're at the bottom. And these are going to be pruned exactly like the Dracaena. We're just going to pull off the lower leaves. Now these can be a bit sharp at points, so just be careful. And they're a little harder to pull off. Now I'm not going to pull off as many because this looks a lot better than those Dracaena did. So basically just a simple haircut, a little off the sides. All right, now there's this one. It's another Colocasia, so it's basically just a smaller variety in a pot. Gonna trim it the exact same way. So this does not have the leaf coming out of it yet, so we go to the top of the little triangle, cut it right there. All right, we've moved around the corner and now it's time for the Monsteras. Unfortunately, the frost has just made them very br brittle, fragile. Not good. Now, I only have enough heart to take out only the very worst ones. Now, these grow very similar to the Colocasias in that the new leaf comes out of the last stem that was there. So we have to kind of use the same rules as for the Colocasia. You can see this is the perfect example of that. This leaf is coming right out of the stem of this one. So we might be able to work it out just a little bit. Don't wanna to go too far. I'm gonna cut the stem right there. Unfortunately, this leaf looks like it does have a little bit of damage on it, but maybe not too bad.
everything looks so nice and tidy. And it didn't take that long, really, a couple hours I was out here. Now again, on all of these, once we dry out a little bit, I'll go ahead and fertilize with a liquid organic fertilizer, check all the drip emitters, make sure they're working right, and then put a layer of mulch on. But look how nice and neat compared to before. And you can just see all the new growth. It makes it feel more like spring. Now I was a little more heartless on this side. I was able to cut off most of the damage and we still have a good amount left. What's great though is that the Monsteras are starting to grow up now. Last year, they were kind of covering the ground, just kind of growing along the ground. Now it's leaving me some more space to get in here and plant some lower growing tropicals underneath them. So whether or not you have tropical plants, although I hope you will get some, but whether or not you have them right now, I hope that this video gets you inspired to get out there and maybe get some things done that you've been putting off if the ground isn't still covered with snow. I'll see you guys next time.